Hello again, uh, Skip Brown, SES Academy, and uh, this is going to be our fourth in a series of videos on motor controls, industrial motor controls. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a motor starter, not in theory, but we're actually going to take a look at a motor starter in a combination starter disconnect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this from the combination starter disconnect, open it up, and let's take a look. Now this is one of two different types of starters, but when I say combination disconnect and starter, this would be something we can, we can turn on and turn off so it's a disconnect. We can run it in hand or automatic, okay? And it has the, the disconnecting means, it has the starter that we've talked about, and it has the, the control transformer. The control transformer here has actually got two leads coming off of the off the 480 side going to the two primary fuses of the transformer these come around right into the transformer body itself the secondary of the transformer is right here we're picking up the uh, the secondary side right here this is the we'll call it the hot or L1 or X uh, X1 and this is the neutral, and I call this a neutral now because you can see the green wire. So this is actually bonded. I don't know if you can see this very well, but this is actually bonded to the case. So we've bonded the neutral. Uh, we, we bonded one side of the transformer. We've created a neutral. So we have here a secondary system, a, a separately derived system, excuse me. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this puppy and see if we can get it out of here and we can uh, take a look at it. So... The top part of this is going to be my 480 coming in. Okay, this is three phases of 480. And the extra conductors here are the two conductors that are going to the, to the primary of the transformer. Let me get these out of here. Whoops, there we go. And this, this type of uh, starter is a little bit smaller than the Nika. The Nika starter is the typical large... Uh, NEMA rated starter. So we're going to pull these, these hot wires out of here. Okay, now we don't have any load conductors here. We've got a couple of um, control wires here, which we'll get into eventually. Now this is a normally open overload. That's normally closed overload. And we'll get into that probably in a little bit later lesson, uh, why these are so handy. For the most part, these normally closed contacts are the same normally closed heaters that we've always seen to the right side of the, um, of the motor coil. We'll take these out. This is going to be two and three, which is going to be our auxiliaries going to the coil. Okay, we get these out of here. We get this out of here. And there we go. Now we just have the starter. And the starter should have a release back here to get off of this piece of DIN rail. Get these guys out of here. Okay. There we go. There we go. Good, 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 good. And so let's let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the starter. This is a reset button right here, okay? We've got an overload setting. So unlike the, unlike the NEMA starter, we can actually dial in the amount of overload protection we want underneath this window. So this, this, uh, this is an LRD15. It has a certain range of current that it can be set from, and we can dial that in to any amount we want. So let's say, for instance, we have a a motor that draws um, 10 amps. So we can dial this into 10 amps and that immediately sets our overloads for 10 amps of overload, okay? This is a reset button right here and this part here is all called the overload block. Now when you buy a telemechanique, or that's a Schneider, but it's probably similar to a telemechanique, which we used to use, um, uh, when you buy this type of NEMA starter, you buy all your components individually. They will assemble them for you, but what makes it really neat is there's an overload block, 
and the overload block is set up for that range of current. Now, if I want a heavier contactor, I can still go with that overload block, but put a heavier contactor on it, or vice versa. Okay, now this, this is my uh, set of auxiliaries. It's, a, um, it's an auxiliary um, adapter, and it sits on top, of the, uh, on top of the relay so that when the relay coil plunges, it takes normally open and normally closed and switches them around. So if I okay, so picking up here, we've got the, um, I, I call them telemechanique, but they're actually made by uh, Schneider. And of course, Siemens makes an IEC starter, uh, uh, Cutler Hammer, uh, all, the, all the motor control companies do. I'm, I'm quite familiar with these. I've, I've installed quite a few of these. So when I engage the plunger on this starter, What's going to happen is, this is just a cover here, what's going to happen is this plunger is going to pull down. This is pulling the motor on. Movement is right here. And I have sets of different contacts right here. Now, uh, just, to, just to familiarize, I'm going to, I'm going to turn this over to ohms. And that's going to give me continuity. So if I look at um, I look at normally closed, that's going to be these two right here, and you can hear the buzzer. And when this pulls in, it opens. These are normally open contacts. These would be probably my auxiliaries. Okay, that's wires 13 and 14. And when I plunge the plunger in, so closed, normally open, normally closed open okay so with this auxiliary contact I can uh, I can separate the the coil from the plunger right here and we'll get to sort of see what really makes this thing fly so right here I've got a I've got a coil winding if you will and this operates on a very basic principle of uh, induction, inductance, induced current, creating magnetism. Okay. So you can see half of the block is right here, and it's going to be drawn down when this coil is energized. This is fixed right here. Okay. This is movable. And it has a spring to hold it open. And uh, so when it's energized, it draws the, draws the contactor down and pulls in the starter. Now, with the starter, these are the, these are the high power contacts. OK, here's A phase. B phase and C phase. Okay, so let's review. We've got the um, we, we've got basically what we would call the starter, which is the contactor part, and we've already reviewed how we use the electromagnetic field and the magnet to draw the plunger down and make contact between A phase, B phase, and C phase, and at the same time we can um, close the normally open set of contacts and open the normally closed set of contacts. And these right here, these are our coil windings. So A1 would be wire, typically wire number three, and A2 would be the neutral. So this is where the, the, uh, the conductors are going to make contact with the, with the uh, winding, the coil. Now this is what really, uh, really for me anyway, makes, makes, let me put this back together here. Yeah, should just slip on like so. Very good. This to me is what really makes um, uh, makes the IEC starter, the non-NEMA starter, really, really slick. With every starter, you have a set of normally closed overload contacts. And of course, we know when the overloads overheat, they're going to uh, open up the control circuit and we drop out the contactor. 
What really makes this neat, and what I've done on several occasions where we have multiple motors in one control cabinet, if, uh, and I'm thinking about grain elevators where we have multiple fans operating in tanks where we have to keep uh, air circulating to keep the grain either fresh or workable or what have you, uh, maybe prevent disease, uh, keep the humidity down for whatever purpose. We have to keep ventilation in there. So when this trips, the normally open contacts close, which will give me an indicating light or even a horn, an alarm to say, wait a minute, we've got a motor that's overloaded for whatever reason, and we're not doing proper ventilation in these fans. So that's what I like about this. You don't get this on a standard Nika starter, but you do get this on the on the um, on these IEC starters. And this this is a Schneider. The product numbers look the same as the old Telemechanique, and uh, this is an LRD15, which would mean that it's an overload, probably up to 5.5 uh, to 8 amps. Okay, and they they measure amperage, and in Europe they don't measure horsepower; they go by kilowatts. There's a conversion factor there. Um, and then, of course, we have all of the European uh, designations here. So they'll talk about, instead of talking so much about our regular terminology, they'll put uh, the cosine of theta in there. They'll put um, uh, power factors in there and so forth. But uh, they do the job. I've had real good luck with them. They're very reliable, even though they look kind of small compared to the, the standard NEMA starters. But they're, uh, they're definitely... Um, uh, give you some, some flexibility that you don't have with the NEMA starters. Thanks for coming. Thanks for listening. And if you have any comments, please don't hesitate. Always willing to, to hear what you have to say or answer any questions you might have. Thank you.